Hello everyone. I made a video some time ago and um not a, I don't want to say a recording, I apologize, a recording. And the recording was a prayer against infidelity. And someone commented on the video saying how they learned over time that you cannot make anyone love you or want to be with you. And uh, I believe they gave some information on how to find a private eye to find out if your spouse is cheating. And I think they gave their story about how they found out that someone was cheating on them and whatever the case was. And I understand that does happen. And but I just wanted to make the point that prayer is not to force someone to do something they don't want to do or to make someone love you. That's not what prayer is for. Um, you pray against things because you need God's divine intervention in your situation. Whether the person will or won't stop cheating, you still need, or whether you do or don't, whether you decide to stay with the person or whether you decide to leave the person, you still need God's intervention in the situation because we have to look at the outcome of what's going on and we have to look at the origin of what's going on when the when someone finds out that another person is cheating on them what happens you're angry you're upset even if you get a private eye and you find out and you and i guess you feel that sense of satisfaction oh yeah i caught you busted or whatever it is what happens after what happens after you still need to live after as as much as a person can build up a wall and say that they're not hurt they can say that they're not affected by what happened but you are you have problems with selfish people will experience problems with self-esteem they will think they're not good enough because someone did it to them and they will feel and if, if it's happened multiple times they will feel that there's something wrong with them why someone cheated on them then you can suffer from um, not being able to trust. You never trust anyone because this person did something to break your trust or break your heart. And then you think that everyone is like that. And you live your life void of, I want to say, uh, void of comfort, of the co of real comfort, knowing it, uh, knowing that someone out there truly does love you. Maybe your family member love you or your friends really do love you, but you can't trust that because of the fact that you experienced this with this person. And there's so many things or some people, um, they build up the wall and they say, well, this person cheated on me. I'll never be in a relationship again where a person cheats on me and I allow them to cheat on me. So what they do is they get it in their head that they're going to hurt everyone before they're before they hurt them. So and I think that's the problem with our society today is so much stuff goes on. And um, there's so much unfaithfulness is because everyone is a lot of people are insecure and they're trying to hurt their partner before their partner hurts them. It's an unfortunate turn of events. However, in all of this, in all of this, we still need God. We still need God because whether the prayer keeps your relationship together or not. The prayer is inviting God into your relationship. It's inviting God to deal with those broken emotions that will happen after you find someone cheating. I don't care how strong you are. There are things that play in your head and there are, you will be affected by finding out that someone cheats on you, no matter how strong you are. There'll be times when you're by yourself and you may not want to admit to someone else that you're hurting because you're supposed to be the strong one. But when you're alone, you have to admit to yourself who you actually are and how much you hurt. And so the prayer is to invite God into your circumstances and let God go ahead and deal with the hurt and deal with the pain that you may experience from this whole situation. And so I don't believe that prayer is 
making someone deal with you when they don't want to deal with you or trying to make someone love you when they don't love you. It's just inviting God into your situation to come and and um, work things out with for you. The Bible says, the Lord will perfect that which concerneth me. Thy mercy, O Lord, endureth forever. Forsake not the works of thine own hands. Sometimes you just need God to perfect it. You don't know what to do. You don't know if you should stay with the person. You don't know if you should leave. You don't know if you should fight for your relationship. You don't know if you should leave it alone. You need God's intervention. So in that, you are humbling yourself. Because the Bible says that God will answer and heal the land if we who are called by his name will humble ourselves and pray. So we need prayer to get God into the situation. We cannot handle it. And a lot of times we're trying to handle situations because we're looking at it from a natural aspect. We forget, and a lot of us don't know, that a lot of things that are going on is very complicated. A person is not cheating because they're a jerk or because they're just not trustworthy. There's something other than what we are seeing in that situation that is making that person cheat. There is an origin for that. Whether someone something happened when they were young, whether they have self-esteem issues, or whatever the case may be, there is an origin to what they are doing. It may not seem like it, but there is an origin. And another thing we have to understand that there is a spiritual aspect to this. And if we would just understand, and it took me a while to understand this also, that everything that we see in the natural is driven by something in the spiritual realm. And there is an end and a plan for everything that is going on. If there's something evil going on in your life, there was a plan set out for that evil thing to happen. And there's supposed to be an end this, this, it's a means to an end. Whatever is going on in your life in some way, whether good or bad, it is a means to an end. There was something set up in the spiritual world that is playing itself out in your life. And that is why another reason, major reason why we need God. We need him. We are not trying we cannot do things in our own energy and we cannot even understand things in our humanness because what it looks like to us is futile and may not be working or may not make sense. It makes a lot of sense when it goes to controlling the parts of our lives that we can't see. So I hope that someone was blessed. I hope that someone was enlightened and you have a wonderful night.